This is the first lecture in general physiology, that is body fluid and compartment. This is the biophysics part of general physiology and you may get the direct questions from this part, that is the numerical based questions and direct you have to select the most suitable answers. So let us start a discussion about the total body water. Out of 100% of our body, 60% is made up of water. So 60% is made up of water. Total body waters are hence divided into two compartments. First one is intersolar compartment and second one is extrasolar compartment and hence it contains the respective fluids that is intersolar fluids and extrasolar fluid. Out of 100% intersolar fluids consist of 66% that is two third of the whole volume and ECF that is 33% that is one third of the volume. ECF contain 20% of the total body weight and ICF contain 40% of total body weight. You can remember this with the 60, 40 and 20 rules. In that 60% is made up of water, 40% that is made up of ICF and 20% is made up of ECF. Again ECF are divided into two parts. First one is plasma that is 5% and second one is interstitial that is 15%. One more further classification that is transolar fluid. This is where this is less than 1%. That's why this is negligible amount. What is transolar fluids? These are the fluids, these are special ECF fluids which are contained in spaces. For example, like in brain, you'll have CSF, cerebrospinal fluid, in joint, synovial fluid, in heart, pericardial fluid. In eyes, that is aqueous and vitreous humor, and in lungs, you will have pure fluid. You may get the diet questions like which one of the following is a transolar fluid, and you may get the options of different fluids along with brain, joint, heart, eyes, and lungs. Now, let us see the volume that is in liters of a body of different substances. First one is like total body water. Ideal weight of a human being that is 70 kg. So hence you are taking the body weight as 70 kg. So total body water what is it? that is 60%. 60 by 100 into total body weight that is 0.6 into body weight that is 42 liters. Similarly ICF consists of 28 liters. ECF that is 14 liters. ECFs are divided into again 2. One is interstitial fluid that is 11 liters and plasma that is 3 liters. Blood consists of 8% of a body weight and plasma consists of 5% of a body weight. Now let us move on to the next topic that is how we are measuring this fluid. For this we are doing an experiment. What is that? We are taking a beaker in that we are using some substance with volume unknown. So in this beaker you are having an unknown volume. In this you are using you are adding a dye or an indicator with I. For what? you are finding the volume of extrasolar fluid or intersolar fluid. For this, we are using an indicator. Let this indicator dissolve in this fluid till it reaches to equilibrium. And we are deriving a sample. This sample having a concentration of C. So, if we need to find the measurement of body fluid, we are using the formula V equal to I by C, where V is volume of ECF I is the initial volume of dye injected or the volume of dye we are using and C is the concentration of dye which is obtained. For this you need two conditions that is dye should be evenly distributed and dye should not leave the compartment. If you are using, if you are taking another example that is if you, are use, if you know the amount of dye that is left in the compartment that is the A. So the formula changes into V equal to I minus A by C where A is the amount of dye that is left in the compartment or that is metabolized. This process is known as or this equation is known as the measurement of the body fluid or indicator, indicator dilution methods or dye dilution method. This term is coined by Stewart Hamilton and hence this is known as Stewart Hamilton dye dilution method. Let us go with an example. We are using a mannitol. Your mannitol this is a special type of tie which you can use for calculating the ECF value. So using 10 gram of mannitol injector. So dye injector is 10 gram. We know what is I. 
and the concentration that is 50 mg percentage that is we know the concentration that is 50 mg and excreted is 10 percent so we are taking a sample for the and that excretion is 10 percent so amount that is left in the compartment how we are calculating a you know that 10 gram of mannitol and excreted is 10 percent so what is 10 gram of 10 percent that is 1 so a will become 1 mean what we need to find we need to find the ecf value so how it goes upon we are using the formula v equal to 10 minus 1 by 50 or v equal to i minus a by c that is 9 by 15 hence we'll get 0 0.18 liters now what are the indicators we can use for this so we are using the indicators that is for total body water we are using deuterium d2o or the heavy water this heavy water is the most commonly used total body water indicators second one we are using triterium that is 3 of h2o anti pyrene and amino pyrene for ecf we are using non metabolized saccharides are used in this inulin are best sucrose and manito also you can use but the best combination that is inulin so for total body water what we are using we are using heavy water or deuterium and for ecf that is insulin for finding the icf volume this is an indirect method we can use the formula total body water minus ecf that is the best combinations will be d2o minus in inulin for plasma volume, we can use radio label iodine or label albumin. And for red cell volume, we can use 51 chromium tagging. What is solute composition of fluid compartment? In intercellular fluid, you'll have more potassium. So potassium is more in ICF. You can remember by with the mnemonics of high kin in this. High represent high potassium intercellular fluid. In extracellular fluid, you may get the higher concentration of sodium and chloride in this. Sodium concentration is more. In ECF and ICF, the cation will be sodium and in ICF, the cation is potassium and magnesium. But the concentration of this potassium is more than magnesium. Anion will be, in ECF it will be chlorine and in ICF it is PO4. Now, what are the factors that affect total body water? The first factor that affect that is age. As the age increases, body water decreases. Second one is the amount of fat. For obese person, that is increase in fat, you'll have decrease in water content of the body. This is frequently asked basic question that is, what will be amount of water in obese persons? It will be normal, it will be decreased or it will be increased. The answer is the amount of water will be decreased. Then what is the water content of a lean body tissues? The water content of a lean body tissues or a body tissue fat that is 71 to 72 percent or you can give an as 71 to 72 ml of 100 gram of lean body tissues. What is the content of body fluids in different age group and sex? In children it is 75 percent of a total body weight and in adult that is we already said is that is 60 percent of body weight in male it is 60 percent of body weight and in female 50 percent of body weight why the female is having decrease and male is having increased water content with respect to body weight why because female has more fat than male hence the body fluid or the water in female that is decrease one of the questions they can ask like in which age the body the water content will be equal in both male and female the answer is at the pre-puberty stage so at the pre-puberty stage the body content in both male and female will be equal and now in the final just need to remember what are the important points of this you may get the direct question or obviously frequently asked direct questions from this table or column that is the what is the percentage of the body fluid so out of 100 percent of the body fluid intercellular that is 67 two third extracellular that is 33 that is one third the plasma volume that is 20 percent of ecf or you can get this either 6.6 .6 or 5 percent interstitial fluid you can that is 80 percent of ecf and that is 26.4% or the 5% or 25%.